Hey folks, welcome back to the Combo Class Bonus Channel. It's time for another math lesson before it starts raining here again in the Combo Classroom. Today we're going to talk about prime numbers that are evenly spaced apart from each other. Now remember, prime numbers are the whole numbers bigger than one whose only factors or even ways of dividing them are one and themselves. Like 12, not prime, because we can split it into halves, thirds, or fourths or stuff. And 13, though, is a prime, can only be split into one or 13 itself. But when can primes be in what we call an arithmetic progression? An arithmetic progression being integers or whole numbers that are a hop type of distance apart where all the hops are the same. Like this would be four integers in an arithmetic progression if each of these three hops were the same number. Like, you know, 11, 13, 15, 17 are an arithmetic progression because they're all two apart. But when can primes have this trait? Well, if we look at the number line right here, we can see two and three are super close. Those are just one apart, but we're not gonna get any more primes one apart because any two numbers that are consecutive have one of them being even, and two is the only even prime. So we're not gonna get much luck looking for more that are one apart as the hopping amount. Same with three to five to seven, which while those are three primes in a miniature arithmetic progression with a hop of two between each one, if we go further, any time we have a hop distance of two, we're gonna start hitting three-ven numbers really quick. And although three is a three-ven or multiple of three prime, there aren't any other three-ven primes because they could be divided by three. And so we're not going to have much luck with two as our hopping distance either. In fact, the type of hop we're going to want to look for ends up being multiples of six and often even multiples of what are called primorials, which is kind of like a factorial, but you multiply all of the prime numbers up through some number only. Like the seven primorial would be two times three times five times seven. And often the hop distance is going to need to be a multiple of a primorial of a certain primorial dependent on the size of the, of the amount we want in an arithmetic progression so that we don't start hitting a multiple of five number or multiple of seven number, things like those along the way, because those aren't going to be primes unless it's the first multiple of five or the first multiple of seven. Now, looking if we can find ones that are hops of six apart, we do have some luck with getting four and even five primes in an arithmetic progression just on this little stretch of the first 30 numbers, where I've just highlighted and written the prime ones out of the first 30. And we can see that starting at three won't help us with a distance of six for our hop. Starting at five though, if we add six, we get to 11 prime. Adding six gets to 17, then 23, then 29, all prime. Although adding six from there does get us to another multiple of five. So that's as far as this stretch of line and six for our hop can get us. But it still will set the record for the earliest, not only four primes in arithmetic progression, but also the earliest five. And by earliest or most minimal, we're going to mean based on the full span it takes up, or in the same uh, word, I mean in other words, but meaning the same thing, based on the last one in the arithmetic progression, so that for example, if we had three plus some huge number for the hop and that hit five primes in arithmetic progression, even though the three is smaller, the last one being so big is going to make us not call that the most minimal. So this right here, 5, 11, 17, 23, 29, is sort of the record setter for both four and five primes in arithmetic progression coming early. And the way we could write that to save space or in, to help us when we need to move on to more of them is gonna be just writing 
our first number, <laughs> just writing our first number, and then our hop distance, which in this case is six plus or times n. So five plus six n, spanning from n being zero through n being four generates five primes. So this is our record setter for four or for five in a row. What about beyond that? Well, if I wanted to get six in a row, I would need a much bigger number line, but we can write a similar formula to this and see what it would mean. Six in a row turns out to start at seven for the earliest or most minimal in terms of its full span, plus 30n. And this is another primorial, like that was two times three, the first two primes, that's two times three times five. It's not always gonna be a primorial itself for the hop number, but multiples of primorials, or even things close to a multiple of a primorial, are gonna often be one of the record setters. In this case, what this would mean is you start with zero for what you're plugging in and go to one under the hop distance and that'll give you the total, or one under the amount of primes you want, and that'll give you the total amount of primes because we're starting at zero. So plugging in zero, we get the number seven. Plugging in one, we get 37, which is a prime. And that would range all the way up through plugging in five, which would be 137 that would spit out, which would be a prime. But then if we added 30 more, we wouldn't get another prime because that's not the record setter for seven in a row. The earliest seven in a row does start at seven also, but the hops are 150N. So those are gonna be slightly larger in their whole span, but that shows us that since plugging in six into that, plus seven would get us, um, let's see, 907, um, then 907 apparently is prime, but 1057 isn't. So that means in the first 907 numbers, there's only this um, as far as seven primes that have hops of an equal distance, primes in an arithmetic progression of seven total. Now, beyond that, we're gonna get to larger ranges that are required. The next one comes so late, but does such a good job that it covers eight, nine, and 10. Now, it doesn't really start that late, but it does start at 199. So from 199, if we add on a jump distance, of 210, which does happen to be another primorial, that is seven primorial, n, and we plug in n's from zero up through nine. <laughs> Pardon that loud train, that train goes crazy sometimes. Um, sometime I'll take you on a field trip to visit the train tracks. But in any case, if we go 199 plus 210 times the values between zero and nine, we're going to get 10 primes on all those things it spits out. And there will be primes in between some of these, of course. It's a different question if you're asking primes in a row that have no primes in between them. Those would be known as consecutive primes in arithmetic progression because they are consecutive in the list of all primes also. These ones were allowing in between values, but that's still the smallest or minimal example of eight, nine, or 10 primes in an arithmetic progression. Now, going forward from there, we get to a pretty big one. The next one covers the record for 11 and 12. 
And this one, I gotta look over here at what I got written down for it is 110,000 and 437 as your starting one plus 13,860N. So that means that you start with zero as usual as what you're plugging in. That's the first, oh no, we're off the list. That's the first prime we plug in. Um, and then we get to that being added and that being added again up through 11 being what we could plug in through the N and get 12 primes in arithmetic progression. Now we'll note that in some cases like 13 here, for 13's record setter, we have a smaller starting value, 4,943, uh, 943, plus a big outer value of hop, 60,060N. So although our starting value starts earlier than that, this isn't gonna let us set the record for 11 or 12 as part of that stretch, because adding all those 60,060s gets us past that almost right away. Uh, so the, since the end value of that, or the whole stretch ends later than that, that doesn't help us on the 11 or 12 records. But there's 13, and although I'm not gonna list all the ones that are currently known for the record setters, because they start to get pretty big to write, I am gonna write 14 for the meme lovers out there, because we got 31,385, 5,039, plus 420,420N. So for the meme lovers out there, I had to include that one. Um, presumably, that's the reason why the number 420 is popular in our culture. Now, how far have we discovered these? How many primes in an arithmetic progression could you have? Well, the largest amount discovered is 27 primes in arithmetic progression. But it's huge. I think it, they're 18 digits, I think. Uh, and the 27 primes in arithmetic progression were discovered just in 2019. And we haven't discovered 28 primes in arithmetic progression as a human species yet. Um, however, discovering something like that isn't the only way to find out things about stuff. You can also prove things. So although the furthest or largest amount of primes in an arithmetic progression we've found are all 18 digits and it's 27 in a row, more has been proven by mathematicians. In fact, by the mathematicians Ben Green and Terence Tao in what's called the Green Tau Theorem. Now, what exactly does the Green Tau Theorem say? Well, these mathematicians were actually able to prove that there are arbitrarily big amounts of what you could call your K value being how many primes were in an arithmetic progression. There are arbitrarily long or large amounts of primes that do fall in arithmetic progression. Now, what does arbitrarily large mean? In this case, we don't use the word infinity. Like you can say there are infinite amount of primes, because that's true. There is an infinite amount of prime numbers. If you want to see a way to prove that, check out the episode on the main Combo Class channel from a while ago about prime proofs, um, along with some other cool proofs are in that episode too. But it's not that hard as a mathematician, even I can do it, to prove that there's an infinite amount of primes. But when you say arbitrarily large, that means bigger than any finite number you could possibly pick, 
basically similar to infinity, but you're not gonna use infinity in cases of saying there's an infinite amount of primes in an arithmetic progression because you can't say there's an infinite amount of things that are a hop apart and then there's another prime after that. There's an infinite amount and then you get some more. Infinity isn't used for things like talking about the gaps between primes, which also can be proven that there are primes that have no other prime in between them, two consecutive primes on the prime list that have arbitrarily large gaps, meaning bigger than any finite number you pick, but you don't wanna use the word infinity because there's more room on the number line after that. Now, arbitrarily large in this case tells us that if I wanted to have one trillion primes that were equal hops from each other or were a one trillion prime arithmetic progression, that will exist somewhere on the number line. Same with the one quadrillion or any number I pick, there will be that many primes somewhere on the number line in arithmetic progression, which is a super awesome thing to prove. And it wasn't easy for them. It took uh, about 50 pages in their original paper to prove it. And even in a condensed version that was written later by some mathematicians to try and condense their thoughts into a more compact way, uh, that still took about 20 or, or maybe more pages to prove. Um, so some things take a while to prove, but are possible to. And so shout out to Ben Green and Terrence Tao. I don't know as much about Ben Green, although I have seen his name come up in some pretty important seeming papers. Uh, but Terrence Tao, at least I know, is one of, if not the greatest living mathematicians. This guy, Terrence Tao, has contributed to so many great findings, and I'm sure his name will come up in more future episodes. So pretty awesome that you can have as many as you want primes somewhere on the number line that are equal hops away from each other. Although, as we can see, it might be pretty high up. And who knows when we'll actually find some of those. You know, if you put enough time out and effort, one of you maybe could be the first to find 28 primes in arithmetic progression. In any case, thank you for joining me here on the Combo Class bonus channel. Um, I want to thank all of the people who have supported the Combo Class Patreon that was just started a few days ago. I don't have the list of your names right here, so I'll be thanking you by name including the people from the lower tiers this time, just because they're early and I feel thankful. Um, <clears throat> I'll be thanking your names in a video soon. Uh, so if anyone wants to go support that, please check that out. There's info in the description here, as well as links to other cool places like the Combo Class Discord and subreddit, and of course, main YouTube channel. So thank you for joining me. Have a great day, and I'll see you again soon.